Hi guys and welcome to the next tutorial. In the last tutorials we learned modeling basic structure elements including setting cross sections, creating members, supports and hinges. So in this tutorial we will use these to model different frame structures. To begin with we will open the new member dialog and define as usual a cross section and a material at first. We will choose an IPE 200 and as material again steel S235. Then we will start with the modeling our first frame. We are going to model three different types. And at the end of this tutorial, we can then have a look on the results. So the columns will have a height of 3 meters with a distance of 5 meters in between. Next we need our supports. The first frame will be a fully fixed one, meaning without any hinges. So we will choose rigid supports for this one. To create the other two frames, we will simply copy this one and then um, insert them 8 meters apart from each other. For that, we will use the move and copy command up here, um, number of copies we can set to, and we enter here 8 in x direction, and then we can click OK. Now we will modify these two frames. Um, our second frame will be a two hinged frame. For that, we only have to change the supports down here from rigid ones to hinge supports. We can select them and then go up to the support symbol, or we can do that simply with double clicking. And then in the drop down menu, we will choose hinge supports and click OK once again. Our last frame will be a three hinge frame, so we have to change a couple of more parameters. First, we'll change also the supports, double click and then we set a hinge supports. Then we will create from this beam at the top two beams by dividing it. With right click, we can choose um, the option divide member and then we will choose an intermediate nodes. We will enter in this dialog under number of nodes um, one and then we can click OK. Now we can see that we have an additional node up here and we will move this node over half a meter upwards. Um, again, we can double click on this node and enter minus 3.5 as the Z coordinate. Then we will uh, additionally apply a member hinge for this beam. With right click we can open the edit member dialog. And down here, like we learned in our last tutorial, we can create a new member hinge. So now that we have our uh, different frames, we will go over the load cases and loads. So this time, instead of applying all loads in one load case, like we did in our previous tutorials, we will define two different load cases. For that, let's say we separate them into horizontal and vertical loads. As vertical load, we only have the self-weight as a load. So we will select this one, but leave the self-weight activated. Then our second load case will be a wind load acting horizontally on the columns. Um, and we will apply a wind load of one kilonewton per meter. So we make sure that the right load case is selected up here. And then um, we will choose in this dialog as load direction, the global X direction, and we'll enter as load parameter one. For considering the results out of both loads, we want to define uh, load combinations. For that, we will click here on the tab load combinations and then create a new load combination. Um, we can click here on this red arrow symbol and add both load cases for this load combination. So we will stay with the partial safety factors, which are set on default according to the European standard group. 1.35 for the self weight and 1.5 for the wind load. We can also display the self weight on the display and activate a self weight. Now we can see both loads, including the partial safety factors for this load combination that we've created. 
Next, we can run the calculation. For that, we click on the button up here called Calculate All. And again, to have a better view, we turn on the wireframe model. Um, now we can see the different results, like deformations for each frame, or we can also animate in order to see the varying deformations for each frame type. If we have a look on the internal forces, for example, the moment, we can see the influence of the member hinges on the results as well. At the hinges, we have no moments. Up here, we can switch between the load cases. So thank you for watching. This was our tutorial learning how to model different frame structures. And in the next video, we will then model trusses.